Okay, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Thought I'd do a um, another quick video in this push pull amplifier series using the uh, the four BD139s. Um, I've decided to oh, I shouldn't say throw caution uh, to the wind, but what I've done is I'm going to use this little power pack here. So it's a um, it's a it's a power brick. It's got an output of 24 volts DC at two amps. So I'm going to give that a go with this. Um, so I've got it set up. I um, have kept the simple divider biasing in place. And I've now swapped out um, the existing 100 ohm resistor. And I've now got uh, two 680 ohm resistors in parallel. Uh, in other words, 340 ohms that's providing the biasing current for the diode, which in turn is then setting up um, the current for the current for the um, the diodes. I say going for the transistors. So if I was to plug that in now, so that's now plugged in. I've disconnected the light because I've um, I need to if I was to continue using this battery pack, I need to change that drop down resistor for the diodes. So that's off circuit. Um, it just turns out that uh, those two resistors um, are resulting in um, 320 milliamps um, quiescent current. So it's it's a, it's eight it's 80 milliamps less uh, total. So 40 milliamps per side less than the other one, but uh, in terms of delving around in my uh, junk box, I didn't have any other resistors that I could easily find. So at this stage, for the for the sake of purposes of, of testing, um, I'm going to leave that in with a, um, as you can see up here, a, um, a biasing current of um, 320 um, milliamps. So, having now got that set up, uh, let's do exactly what we did in the previous videos. Let's just throw in... Um, some drive, so this is going to be at 7.1 megahertz. If we just to come out a bit, we'll see both that and the power meter. Uh, right, so that's now on, and we can start to increase here. So that's sitting on there on a quarter watt going in. So that's uh, our 250 milliwatts, and you can see there we are now pushing 10 and uh, 10 watts quite happily. So we will just increase that. We can count that up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6.8 divisions. Let me just crank that down. So uh, 6.8, it's on a 10 times probe, we're on 1 volt per division. Uh, let's divide that by 2, 0 0.7071, multiply that, squared 50, divide, 11.5 watts. So 11.5 watts we're getting out of there for a, a, um, 250 milliwatt input. If I was to keep cranking this up, so let's go down a scale on that. Um, we don't get much more at all, so let's just say we, we top out around there. So I don't think I can squeeze it. Oh, yes, I can. So let's just quick have a quick look at that. Um, so that's 2, 4, 6, 7, 7.6. Let's just crank that down. So um, 7.6 into 10 times, we're on the 1 volt scale still, 2 divide 0 0.7071 times squared, 50 divide, comes out at 14 and a half watts. Um, so that's, that's certainly a heck of a lot more power than, than what we'd expect um, than just running it purely off 13.8 um, off, uh, volts. So, so let's just crank that back up to... Um, 10 watts, so that's sort of 10 watts continuous coming out, and yeah, not too bad. So they're um, so that's that's CW, so that's that's pretty hard, but that's fine. You know, I, you can see the leaving the marks on my fingers, so I'm squeezing it pretty hard. That's just the meter turning off. So while it's warming up, it's not. Excessive, that's for sure. So uh, yeah, ending is off. So those, you know, that's now been going on for probably 40, 45 seconds. Key down at 10 watts, and that's still fine. They seem to be about the, all the right, right temperature, which is good. So no one's hogging more current than the other. So that's fine. So that's good. And then again, that's what the uh, those RE resistors bypass. So exactly the same configuration as we left the last video. Uh, admittedly. That output transformer is, is 5 to 5. I haven't replaced that with a um, 7 to 8. But again, that's still key down. 
and that's still fine. I'm still squeezing it as hard as I can, marks on my fingers, nothing's getting burnt there. So uh, yeah, interesting. So I'll just drop that back down to zero. Um, an interesting little experiment, and uh, like I say, 14 watts output is uh, not too bad. But I'd probably run it more like um, with that sort of 250 milliwatts in, so getting 10 watts out. So um, that might be quite a nice little uh, power amplifier. Um, Vice the um, the LD MOS amplifier that was running on 18 volts to get the same power out. Anyway, so. Uh, there you go, uh, that may be of interest to people, but um, like I say, uh, that little transformer there just came out of a um, came out of the junk box. So I'm not quite sure where it came from in the end, but it's a it's a Canon brick. Uh, yeah, in fact, what I will do just quickly, I'll just turn that power back on again. Um, let's just have a quick look at that that meter. Okay, so we'll plug that back in again. Um, Let's crank it up to 10. So that's 1.2 amps. So 124 millivolts across a 0.1 ohm resistor. So we're uh, we're taking through, like I say, 1.24 amps. Full noise. So it's as much as I can crank out of it, 1.8 amps. So I'd, I wouldn't run there. I'd run it more like um, more like there at um, that 10 watts out for a quarter watt in. So 1.25 amps. So that's still well within our current rating for the... Uh, the current rating for the um, um, power supply. So there you go. Interesting enough, at zero, at zero drive now, our um, biasing has crept up. So as I mentioned in the last video, there's no compensation for temperature rise on the bias. Um, but that would be something to look at, is to, to mount maybe that diode on the heatsink. So um, it's, it tends to reduce the bias as the temperature increases. Um, but there you have it. Okay, I'll say 73 is there. Um, uh, and uh, like I say, I think I might turn the attention now to that, uh, that RF amplifier. Cheers all.